right guys, let's get into the details of the Howa 1500 sitting in the American Build Arms chassis. So first thing to note, Howa 1500, it's a standard run of the mill, factory, barreled action. The AB uh, Arms partnership uh, happened uh, quite a few years ago actually, and I think it is discontinued now. The last time I checked on these uh, rifles, they had been discontinued and no longer being produced. The Howa 1500 is, of course, but not sitting in this particular chassis. And I, for one, have an opinion on why that is. We'll get into that in just a second, but first, just more specs of the rifle. You've got a 20 inch factory barrel here. It is a one in 10 twist. And so I paired that up with the good old standard federal gold medal match 175 grain. This is the Sierra Match Kings. And I found these to be running right at about 2,500 feet per second through this rifle. Um, the trigger is factory and set to, it's a two stage, um, set to roughly three and a half, four pounds. So just figure it, you know, one and a half on each stage or two on each stage, something like that. Um, I did use the MDT one piece mount up here on top. This is the medium and I know some of you right now are like holy crap is that is that objective touching the chassis? No, it's not. I do have some daylight underneath there, but it's dang close. Um, I think probably a high set of rings would have been just right with this particular scope, which is the tracked Toric four and a half to 30 by 56. I like the scope. Nothing but good things to say about this scope for right now. It's a great run of the, like, I don't want to say run of the mill. That makes it sound lower end. It's a mid range with good quality glass for 1500 bucks street price. Excellent optic. It's great. It's a great option. Um, back to the rifle. So we've got the area 419 Hellfire brake sitting up on front. I always run Atlas bipods. I did add a couple of the MDT weights onto each side of the chassis here to get it a little heavier to help mitigate some of that 308 recoil, but also just to balance out the rifle a little bit better. I also swapped out the grip here from the standard, very thin, very lightweight plastic, like chintzy feeling plastic grip um, to the MDT rubber grip which was a good choice. Also, just because of the way everything sits on this rifle, I didn't have enough adjustability back here on the buttstock in order to be able to get my face perfectly aligned <clears throat> with my scope properly. And so um, I did cut a piece of foam here, probably a half inch piece of foam and taped that on so that I could get my proper eye relief. Um, this cheek piece is a downside that I will talk about. It is extremely flimsy and it comes loose very quickly. The very first thing that I would, that I would uh, ding on this rifle is this buttstock. It's kind of a standard AR uh, buffer tube. It's a pistol length buffer tube. So you only have minimal amount of forward and backward movement here. You also can adjust this butt, uh, butt pad piece that has a little bit of additional adjustment, but you can't raise or lower it. And so for me, that lended itself to being way too low down into my, my shoulder pocket, even down onto my chest for how I like to shoot a rifle. So I would completely do away with this butt stock altogether. Gone, I'd put a Magpul, you know, PRS light or something like that stock on here. Um, just change that out and get rid of it because I found it to be kind of the problem all day long with not being able to get very comfortable behind the rifle. Um, I do like how it's got kind of this monolithic Picatinny rail all the way across the top. I, I tend to, or have started to like, rails all the way at, on the top of rifles. You know, a lot of our chassis just have the lower half and then there's nothing over the top. I kind of like having this over the top. One, I find that it kind of helps to mitigate um, some of the mirage that you see once the thing starts to heat up. And then also, I've started running night vision on some of my uh, rifles in front of a day optic. And so I can just easily clip that right on. So I did like that. Now to the accuracy of it, um, it initially really liked these. My, my first, you know, 15, 20 shots through the rifle were just kind of finding my zero. But then I put a three shot and a five shot group 
um, down there at 100 yards, and both were sub-MOA. Probably the three-shot group was um, right close to an inch, maybe a little under, and then the five-shot group was three-quarters or a little under. And so I thought, we're good to go. And then I proceeded to lay down and stretch it out to, um, I tried, I attempted a thousand yards. I mean, that 800 yard barrier for 308 was pretty close. I had to do a little tweaking at nine to get a hit. And then I spent 20 rounds trying to hit that thousand yard plate and could not impact that thousand yard plate. So I have definitively, definitively proven that it is not an 800 yard invisible wall it is a 900 yard invisible wall apparently so there's that um but you know so as far as the barricades and just shooting positional no issues there i i do have maybe a downside with that and that is just the rounded um, chassis here on the bottom everything is smoothed and rounded and so it actually looks very nice and feels very nice to the hand but these days, especially shooting off of barricades and things of that nature for PRS style competitions, we like having these wide flat bottoms. It just helps us get more stable. And yeah, I wasn't able to do that quite as well with this. Now, there is M-lock slots all the way along the vast majority of this lower piece. And so I could put an Arca rail, aftermarket Arca rail on there and add a little bit more of that flat, wide, you know, stable bottom that we might kind of like. Plus then I'd be able to shoot it off of a tripod. So um, guys, if I had to give this an all in, like an all in rating right now, you know, number one, would you recommend buying it, Joel? Um, I would for the Howa 1500. Howa 1500 seems, seems great. Barreled action is fine. The action itself doesn't bind. It's relatively smooth for a factory gun. The trigger being two stage, even, even at three and a half or four pounds, whatever it was, was not annoying. The Howa 1500s seem to shoot pretty well. Um, I would forego this chassis. Uh, I, don't, I don't often say, don't buy a chassis. Now, if it meets your needs, guys, I think they are still producing these. If it meets your needs, go ahead and purchase it for yourself it does have some great features with the with the handguard up here and the fit and finish is nice and and whatnot but i personally am finding some downsides and most of it revolving just around the ergonomics of how it sits in my shoulder and all that especially with the buttstock so um I would recommend it if you're in the, in the ballpark, like if you could only spend $1,100, $1,200 on a rifle and you wanted a chassis and, and you wanted a monolithic rail and some adjustability of being able to swap out, you know, different butt stocks, maybe it's the choice for you. Um, as for me, I would probably take this barreled action out of this rifle immediately and drop it into some other kind of stock or chassis and, uh, and revisit it. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being, you know, high-end custom, you know, full custom PRS rig, um, and, you know, a 1 being like, I don't know, cheap $300 like Ruger American or something like that, uh, I would place this squarely in the middle, you know, 5, 4.5, 5. Uh, it's, it's lower on the scale for me, guys. I, I just found too many things that didn't quite work out right for me to be able to recommend this all that highly. All the parts that I added, the track torque, the MDT parts, the Area 419 parts, the Atlas bipod, all those parts, and even the barreled action from Howa, great. Sitting in this chassis, just didn't like it all that much. And so here towards the end of the day, I will say I went back to recheck my zero and I could not get this thing to shoot any better than about a five inch group down there. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. I probably put, the, the rifle probably has a hundred rounds through it total. I checked all of my action screw, like the action is sitting tight in the chassis, scope, everything's tight, muzzle, muzzle device is tight, everything's still tight. Yet, when I went to recheck zero at the end of the day, I could not get better than a four or five inch group. So I'm not quite sure what that is all about. I'll clean, I'll check everything when I get home and I'll retest, but for now, um, issues.
hopefully the uh, the review is appreciated today just in terms of you know hearing about this particular little niche um, within our niche you know there's a lot of factory rifles this was an offering that didn't happen for very long and it's discontinued now but um, you know just bringing you something maybe you haven't seen every single day so <laughs> thanks for watching make sure to check out those affiliate links down below and get you some uh, some savings down there if you are in the market for some gear there's coltag brown ales worn worn mounts trigger interactive um you know uh axle ear pro which i was using today in the video love that i can bluetooth those things they're great so maybe give some love to those sponsors down below in the affiliate links thanks for watching you guys stay tuned for more great videos from precision rifle network